Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this video is based on a request I got not so long ago. Someone asked me if 24 frames per second could make for a suitable gaming experience. You've all heard the meme, I'm sure, a cinematic 24 FPS, but where does it come from? Well since the introduction of films with sound, 24 frames per second has become the standard for movies and TV shows. The standard that we're all accustomed to. As observers, this frame rate is perfectly acceptable because there's no interaction. A solid 24 FPS presentation with consistent frame times and natural motion blur. With games, we feel them. Character movement, interaction and camera rotation is all determined by us, outside of cutscenes of course. 24 frames per second doesn't actually look that bad if we're not moving, if we just observe the scene as if it were a video. Well, to all of you watching, it is a video, so this footage may actually look a lot smoother than it is regardless, even when we switch from a static shot to an action scene. You'll have to take my word for it when I say it's pretty jarring. That said, it's not as bad as it could be. While there's no reason to purposely cap your frame rate to 24 FPS because it doesn't feel pleasant to play at, you might find that your hardware doesn't actually allow for much more performance wise. Let's say that you're using an aging graphics card or an integrated GPU that struggles to maintain 30 FPS. The game might hover around that mark but ultimately both slightly exceed and fall below it. A variable frame rate like this will bring with it inconsistent frame times and it's these these frame times that make things feel a lot worse. Check out the graph in the top left corner. The various spikes indicate that the time between each delivered frame is changing constantly. For a decent 30 FPS experience you'd want 33.3 millisecond frame times for the smoothest motion. For 60 FPS it's 16.6 milliseconds. Playing Cyberpunk here with a system that can't quite manage a continuous 30 FPS doesn't feel that bad, but when we enable a frame rate cap our frame times suddenly become more uniform and the experience feels a lot more pleasant. There might still be the odd dip and drop in performance here and there, but it does feel a lot better overall. This brings us back to the original question of is 24 FPS playable though, and the answer is all down to personal preference. As a console gamer for most of my life I still find 30 FPS playable, especially when it's a solid 30 FPS as demonstrated previously, but 24 FPS is a little too low even for me. My brain, like anyone else's, still perceives it as motion, but it's just not responsive enough to play at. If you are faced with some serious hardware limitations and you are stuck with a low frame rate until you can upgrade your PC, there are certainly things you can do to make it feel better, like enabling a frame rate cap for solid frame time numbers. Enabling motion blur is also a trick that some might wish to implement. I tend to disable it at the soonest possible opportunity, as I find it quite nauseating, though not so much in third person games, which tend to feel more playable at lower frame rates than first person titles, sometimes by quite a lot. It's better to try and make the frame rate of a game more consistent rather than just attempting to achieve the illusion that it is. 24 FPS, while not ideal in most people's minds, I'm sure, can, like any frame rate, be improved by enabling an FPS cap in programs like Revertuner. Even at 24 FPS, the solid 41.6 millisecond frame times are attributing to a better overall experience than a game that's constantly varying between, say, 20 and 25 FPS. To the viewer that asked me if 24 frames per second is playable then, I'd say that while it's certainly not enjoyable, it's not as unbearable if it's consistent. And the same goes for other frame rates too. If you're usually happy with 30 FPS, for example, and for some reason it doesn't feel quite right in a specific game that you're playing, try capping it, either within the game using built-in features or externally, because it's probably the frame times that are to blame for an inconsistent or choppy gaming experience. That said, there's no getting around the fact that you might find yourself bottom of the leaderboard when it comes to competitive first person shooters. Thank you very much for watching this one then. To the person that asked me the question, I hope this satisfies your curiosity. And to everyone else, thank you as always for watching. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one. 
and we'll be back at 60 frames per second then as well.